Hey, this is Darius Aria. We're going to explore this area, the archaeological park of the Theater of Marcellus. It is magnificent. You see this grand travertine construction that kind of looks like the Colosseum, same kind of architecture and engineering. There are a number of temples, like the Temple of Apollo Socianus that we'll explore. There's the Temple of Bologna. So we'll make our way down this modern ramp, going away from the modern street level, down to an area that was excavated in the fascist era, revealing the pavement in the time of Augustus. And this is the second of three major theaters built in the uh, city of Rome. And perched on top of it today is a large private palace built in the Renaissance times, subdivided into private apartments. It is magnificent. What a great place to live. You can still live there today. So what we're taking a look at then is this archaeological park that's free and accessible to the people that allows you to go from basically the Forum Holatorium, Forum Boarium area toward what we call the southern part of the Campus Martius. That's where we're walking now. And this archaeological park contains the theater, but it also contains a number of temples. And this temple right here doesn't look like much, it's like a patch of grass. That is the remains of the Temple of Bologna with the Roman road going right by it. This is a place from which you could declare war on the enemy of the state. And here you have the reconstructed remains, very impressive, of the Temple of Apollo Socianus. Goes back to the fifth century BC, what you see is Augustine in date, rebuilt of marble, and then reconstructed in the fascist era. It's called anastolosis, this process through which they take the real chunks of marble and replace the missing parts with, in this case, concrete. We can look back to the Capitoline Hill, and I'm looking at the area that would have been designated for the original theater planned by Julius Caesar. He was killed, and the plan was modified and became a freestanding theater built by Augustus in honor of his nephew, Marcellus. And it really is a magnificent park that allows us to walk on the level of ancient Romans in the time of Augustus, going past the remains of the large temple of Apollo, now looking at the wall that belonged to the portico of Octavia, which is an encasement, colonnades, about a football field by a football field, enclosing two temples, the temple of Jupiter and the temple of Juno. Looking over here to other constructions, to the synagogue, and right now I'm pointing at the medieval house that's remained in escape destruction, still used by the city of Rome. So you have a lot of periods at once, and we're making our way to the remains of an open track, an open field called the Circus Flaminius, surrounded by about 12 temples in ancient Roman times. We're also making our way into the Jewish ghetto, constructed in the Renaissance times. There's a modern bridge, an area that we're walking underneath. This has all been excavated out in the late 1990s. But we get a real good sense now of the entrance. This is the entry gateway of the massive portico of Octavia. First built in the second century BC, then rebuilt by Augustus's sister, Octavia, and finally rebuilt after a fire by the Emperor Septimius Severus. And when he rebuilds it, you can see right there, zooming in, there's even part of a column that's stuck in as reused marble to make the top part of this gate. So there's a lot of spoliation, a lot of reused material by the Romans themselves already in antiquity, in this case in the 3rd century AD. Now we're making our way up the modern ramp. Anyone can do so when you visit Rome. Coming away again from the ancient levels and up to the modern street level. Into the Jewish ghetto. Into a modern, thriving community, neighborhood. But it's really cool to go up this ramp and leave behind the ancient levels and go up to the modern street level. You can see some of the colonnades off to either side. It would have been 50 meters wide on either side and then 100 meters back. And in the center, a massive piazza with two temples. This piazza itself was dug out in the late 1990s to reveal more of the antiquities. It's a place that's actually very famous as well, notorious, because it's from here and this particular juncture, this point of the city, that the Nazis deported a number of Jews from Rome to Auschwitz. There is the uh, synagogue again, built by the kings of Rome after the unification of Italy at the end of the 19th century. Walking through this vibrant 
neighborhood and community, a place to eat and shop and live. Looking back, always mindful. Here's the inscription. Septemius Severus built this after an incendio, after a fire. So the monuments themselves, many times in Rome, still speak to us. And you can see these columns here are excavated out to the ground level. And as they trail off, you even see one not excavated, just waiting to be reclaimed, to be excavated. Such is Rome, so many layers of history, you can't see it all, but you have a good sense that there's always gonna be something ancient beneath your feet. There's a local pasticceria, place for local pastries. A lot of tables are always out in the ghetto. There's Gigetto on the left. Apartment buildings where people live. Here's a classic. Founded in 1820, Limantani. It's a place that I've gotten many things from my kitchen. Still open right here in the heart of the ghetto, right here in the shadow of all of this history. It's a great place to explore. It's a great place to see when you visit Rome. And now you've gotten a taste of the Southern Campus Marshes and the Circus Flaminius of ancient Rome.